In terms of uh, treatment for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, there are none right now except for lifestyle modification. So the study that was undertaken is a uh, large uh, phase three randomized clinical trial of two dose doses of obidicolic acid, 25 milligram per day, uh, and 10 milligram per day uh, uh, versus placebo. Randomization was one to one to one and it was uh, stratified for important uh, confounders that you wanted to make sure that they're equally uh, uh, distributed. The end point of the study uh, for the interim analysis was uh, uh, decided to be two different ones uh, that could be co-equal, meaning that you can either meet the fibrosis endpoint, which is improvement of fibrosis by one stage or higher without worsening steatohepatitis, or resolution of steatohepatitis without uh, worsening of fibrosis. Uh, and either one of those endpoints could make uh, the study. The, the first interim analysis of this study, which is 18 months, has 931 patients, which is used for the uh, ITT analysis. The primary uh, outcome of the study for the ITT uh, showed that there was significant improvement of uh, fibrosis endpoint uh, with a 25 milligram arm with a pre-specified p-value that was less than 0.01. In fact, this was highly significant that way. The 10 milligram of obituicolic acid had a p-value of 0.04, but did not meet the pre-specified uh, uh, value of, or, or significance that was decided, uh, which, was, which was, again, the, the 25 milligram was highly significant compared to placebo. The other endpoint that was also primary endpoint was steatohepatitis resolution without worsening fibrosis. That was not met per the p-value that was decided for, uh, for you know, a priori. However, if you look at the components of steatohepatitis, it's actually improvement of ballooning, improvement of uh, double inflammation, or even improvement of NAS score by two or higher, or an overall assessment of uh, steatohepatitis by the pathologist, center pathologist, blinded to the study sequence of the biopsies or the treatment, there was actually improvement. So there is some signal that there's actually improvement of, uh, of uh, uh, steatohepatitis, although the primary endpoint wasn't met. When you look at biochemical improvement, there is, uh, s uh, there is significant improvement and consistent improvement across uh, uh, ALT, ASD, and GGT. O over 80% of patients actually completed the, the second of a biopsy. AEs were mild to moderate, and it was equal across all different arms of the study. The most common uh, AEs were those that are known for FXRs and for OCA. Pruritus uh, occurred more commonly in the 25 milligram arm, but 93% of those were actually mild to moderate. Uh, the other, of course, uh, uh, AE was the, uh, uh, the increase in the, uh, in the lipid profile, LDL and total cholesterol, that actually ameliorated and came down uh, as the drug was actually continued. Uh, cardiac events uh, equal uh, across different arms and there was no other really uh, any signal. So the centrum analysis tells us that, that we are actually uh, coming to a watershed moment for treatment of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis for which there is no treatment right now in terms of medical therapy and lifestyle modification is very difficult to achieve and maintain. So this is the first drug in a very rigid and very large randomized clinical trial that show efficacy for fibrosis. And to me, since fibrosis, I believe, is the most important predictor of mortality, that has quite a bit of meaningful, uh, uh, sort of, uh, 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 it, it's quite meaningful for patients that they will have an option, hopefully pretty soon. The study is ongoing, and uh, most importantly, the study will, on, will, will be also uh, looking at adverse events. And, and event-driven sort of end of the study is what we are going to look for. Uh, and so at this point in time, we don't know what it will be in a year or two years or three years, but it's ongoing study. Part of the next analysis would be to look at uh, predictors of response or lack thereof. Those analyses are ongoing and hopefully we present it at the next liver meeting in Boston in, in November of next year. But those are quite important issues that you need to, to, you need to assess. But in general, when you look at fibrosis improvement, when you look at liver enzyme improvement, yeah, it, there is at least twice as much improvement in the active arm and the 25 milligram than, than, than the placebo. More importantly, if you look at even more strict definition, meaning that two-point improvement of fibrosis as a minimum, 
they actually see almost three times improvement than the 25 milligram. And if you look at those patients that actually in every arm that progressed versus regressed or improved versus worsened, you see three times more patients that actually improve in 25 milligram arm than placebo, when, well, than, than regressed. But when you look at placebo, they're equal, about 20% on both sides of both improvement and actually worsening.